All right, let's get started. In this video, I'm going to give you an update on where I'm at relative to getting my two telescopes dropped off at Starfront Observatories down in Texas. Mission accomplished. After 57 hours uh, of driving 3,774 miles, I got back last night. Uh, my CFO was with me, Lori, and this was basically the route down. Went through uh, Indio, um, went over to Las Cruces, up to Abilene, and then dropped down uh, to a Starfront Observatories. And then we continued on down to um, Austin, where we spent four days over New Year's. Uh, really had a blast. Uh, this whole trip was an excellent trip, a long way to go, uh, but we just made an adventure out of it and we saw some beautiful country, in particular both Lori and I uh, are into volcanoes and uh, volcanic landscapes and everything and nothing could be better than going through New Mexico and parts of Arizona where there's a lot of evidence of ancient volcanism and uh, ancient lava flows and everything. So uh, we just uh, we just had a good time. Um, we took uh, our Tesla Model Three, excellent. I took out a one month subscription to Full Self Driving. Really helped uh, reduce the fatigue. I basically just let the car drive. There was a few times where I had to uh, get take control of the car. Again, uh, this is a Tesla Model 3 2023. It's running hardware three uh, platform in there, the computer. And so the release that I had available to me on subscription is not the latest release that if you had hardware four, uh, you would uh, you would have. So, but um, here we are. Or I am. Lori's taking the pictures at Starfront. This is Nate. Nate, if you happen to see this video, I want to give you a shout out to you. Excellent job. Nate basically was the one to move my uh, two scopes onto the piers and get them up and ready. I dropped them off Sunday the 29th at 1 p.m. And the next evening, they were ready for me. I got on them and I was even able to do some imaging. So a very very uh, quick turnaround. Now, Lori snapped some pictures of Starfront, and here are the buildings. Uh, I believe this is uh, building one, and then they go up in number this way. And here's uh, a view from the back, and you see here's where they slide uh, the roofs uh, out on it. This is what it's all about. Bortle 1. 23.91. I've not seen that before. Um, well, granted, I think I imaged one time before up in Aden, uh, California at the Golden State Star Party a couple of years ago, and it was uh, Bortle 1 skies, I'm told. I didn't have my handheld meter at the time, nor did I have my uh, Prima Lucha Lab Eagle 5S uh, with the eye to tell me uh, what the actual darkness of the sky was. But seeing 23.91, for me, that's what it's all about. Uh, I had been imaging as a traveler under Bortle 3.4. Uh, now I don't have to travel anymore. Theoretically, I have more days uh, in the month uh, to image, weather permitting. And it's nice to see that these are truly dark skies uh, down at Starfront Observatories. Um, here's how I transported my two scopes, um, Edge HD8 on the right and my Red Cat. Uh, they were all assembled, which I think helped facilitate Nate's ability to get them up and online uh, quickly. Again, uh, Nate, thank you for all your efforts. Here is what it looks like. This is what I was uh, bringing down. This is the Edge HD with the Wanderer box, which I think there's a bug and I'm gonna have to update my Wanderer Empire software on it. 
and then my B-Link SER5 uh, mini computer that uh, is now running the uh, Edge HD uh, 8 imaging and uh, my MM or 174MM OAG uh, EAF EFW uh, configuration and then this is what uh, my Red Cat looked like now sporting the Deep Sky Dad flap panel 2 for the Red Cat 51. Uh, so that's uh, what it looked like uh, when I dropped it off. I tried to dress the cables as well as I could. But again, uh, that's what their expertise is. So if you send equipment down there or drop equipment off at Starfront, uh, they are going to manage cables for you in a manner to make sure that you can have a snag-free uh, night of imaging and then um, we took advantage of being down in Austin Texas uh, first time either Lori or I have been uh, in Austin I had been to many places in Texas before in my former uh, career as uh, uh, an ultra ultrasonic uh, technician uh, examining uh, steel uh, steam turbine rotors in various uh, power plants. So did jobs for uh, Texas Power and Light, Texas Utilities. So I had been to a lot of places in Texas already, but not to Austin. Austin's a little bit different than the other parts of Texas from what I'm seeing. Uh, really cool vibe in Austin. We took advantage to see the Lyndon Baines Johnson Library and Museum. First time I'd ever been to a presidential library. Uh, now I want to put it, it was such a great experience. Uh, and whatever you might think of his politics around the war in Vietnam and the Tet Offensive in March of 1968 and all that, um, it was uh, a really worthwhile tour uh, to see the, uh, the library. And now there's two other presidential libraries in California, and we're going to make an effort to visit both of them um, in the coming months. Um, here's the CFO, my CFO. My lovely CFO, Lori, uh, who makes all this uh, possible for me uh, by managing the money. And uh, again, she saw this as a good opportunity to, one, save some money uh, versus me traveling in the van and the gas and, um, and the uh, Starlink and all those other things. Uh, but here we are in a replica of the Oval Office. It's seven eighths scale uh, of the actual Oval Office in Washington, D.C. And um, who can go to Texas without trying some barbecue? And so we stopped in at Black's Barbecue. Uh, excellent barbecue. If you're a barbecue fan, uh, really good meal and uh, couldn't pass it up. And we stopped. We ate at several other places as well for barbecue along our trip. Uh, throughout Texas. Um, here is, uh, I was imaging uh, NGC 1491, I think. What is it? The Fossil Footprint Nebula, or no, what is it? It is the uh, Fossil Footprint Nebula. Um, I just want to say, part of what they do, uh, they do a polar alignment, and they use sharp cap for that. And then they tuned my, uh, my guiding scopes and everything. And I've never seen my stars on my Edge HD 8 uh, look this good. Which means I've just been a slacker. Not taking the time to really optimize uh, my uh, guide scope uh, and OAG and everything. And, and they took care of that for me. I am going to go into more specifics in, in uh, future videos, um, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment, but uh, these guiding metrics are fantastic, and here I am in the hotel room in Austin accessing my equipment in, um, in uh, Starfront, uh, and the way I have things set up, which I'll go into in future videos, I can... Uh, essentially use uh, uh, tier zero uh, to create a VPN into my equipment so I can use uh, Windows Remote Desktop 
I can also access his equipment via Chrome Remote Desktop. I prefer accessing my equipment through uh, Windows Remote Desktop, though. Uh, a few more things that I can do with it, like uh, attach shares and to copy over data and those type of things. Um, so, you know, it was just a fun experience with Lori. Uh, we saw some beautiful parts of the United States. Uh, we pushed on the way down, so basically three days to get there. The, mor the morning of the fourth day, uh, we were in Abilene, and then we drove down to uh, Starfront, dropped off the equipment. Again, Nate, uh, excellent job. Um, quality of the skies look really good uh, based upon the metrics I'm seeing off my Eagle uh, 5S. Uh, so as advertised... And, um, you know, just been a, a, a really exciting trip. And, uh, you know, I am a big fan. I'm going to be a fanboy, I think, of Starfront. Now, I hope I don't have to use their technical support a whole lot beyond uh, the initial setup. But this is astrophotography, so there are going to be issues. And so from time to time, I'll have to uh, cut a ticket to their technical support team I think of them as smart hands because they really have a lot of knowledge. They work with a wide range of solutions and uh, based upon the quality of how they tuned up uh, my two systems um, much better than I was able to do uh, on my own. So um, the other thing I want to say is that um, actually it was less expensive. They were able to uh, contain both my, uh, let's see if we can uh, do this here just real quickly. All right, and let's go price size guy. Okay, they've been making some, uh, some differences here. So they were able to, oh, I love this. This is the first time I'm looking at this. So they were able to get both my Red Cat 51 and my Edge HD 8 onto a light pier in building three. Now, normally the Red Cat 51 could go on a mini pier, but uh, because of the uh, Deep Sky Dad flap panel, uh, it has a, a greater swing uh, requirement. So that bumped it up to the uh, $199 a month uh, offering. But, you know, um, I thought I was going to have to put the Edge HD 8 on the standard pier, but it turns out they could they were able to fit it in to the light pier. So what they really do is um, once they see your configuration and get it all in place, uh, uh, then they'll make it a they may need to make adjustments in my case I was fortunate they were able to adjust down I had ordered one standard one light and they were able to uh, uh, adjust it down oh you don't know what I'm looking at so here is the um, here is the new uh, web pages I'm gonna have to go through this but again uh, they were able to fit both my scopes onto the light uh, pure configuration and again, what I'm using for mounts are the ZWO AM5. I have the original that my Red Cat is on, and then I have the AM5N with a counterweight that the Edge HD8 is on. So, um, great job, Starfront. Great job, Lori. Thank you for supporting me uh, with this decision. Uh, and uh, now I'm going to be able to sit in the leisure of my home and image. And uh, while I did enjoy doing all the travel, um, there was anxiety around, should I travel? What's the weather? If I start going down to the Southern California desert 500 miles away and weather changes, so all that's off the table now and I'm able to live a little bit more normal life. And really, at the end of the day, I'm interested in trying to produce quality data. Now, being able to image under Bortle One Skies, I think, is going to help support that goal of quality data, especially with the way they tuned up my two systems. Uh, so, you know, 
I'm, uh, I'm very happy so far. And I will do additional videos, dig into things, uh, go through the um, how I have a UPS there, how I have a uh, uh, switch uh, box for the AC plugs uh, with six outlets. I'll go into that so you, you'll have a little bit more detail. So if you're curious about uh, Starfront, I'll help share some of the information about my two configurations down there. So. All right, uh, that's about it. Uh, thanks for sticking with the channel. I want to thank all the existing subscribers as well as all the new subscribers as well as the casual people that just kind of find the channel and watch a few things, don't subscribe, uh, but hopefully get some value and they'll come back uh, and watch some additional videos. But if you are interested in remote observatories what life may be like uh, I would hit the notification bell uh, please consider subscribing uh, I've already talked to some other people at Starfront who's willing to do some interviews so you can kind of get uh, perspectives beyond mine on why they chose uh, to go remote and in particular why they chose uh, Starfront observatory so um, look for that content uh, coming up down the road all right. Other than that, thanks for dropping in. Thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. Clear skies.